everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at hydrangeas. Um, I live in France and here hydrangeas are incredibly popular. They're everywhere and uh, they're so beautiful. They come in all sorts of different colours. We don't have very many ourselves but we do have some really rather pretty blue ones. So I'm going to see what we can do with those today and I'm going to add a dragonfly to my composition. Now, the first thing I have to point out is the shape of the leaves, which are really a kind of heart shape. I think you could say a kind of heart shape. And so that's important to notice. And the flowers are made up of lots of small florets, um, which we're not going to draw all individually. This isn't going to be photorealistic, not my not my jam, as they say in the younger generation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a loose wet and wet background. Then we're going to come in with some um, uh, pen and ink work. And then we're going to um, uh, draw the butterfly, uh, sorry, the dragonfly um, as well. So we're going to arrange our flowers something like this. We'll have the um, the stems coming down like that and then we'll make sure that the leaves are their characteristic shape. Um, I was looking on Pinterest at other people's um, paintings of these and often people don't seem to know what shape the leaves are and um, that's actually quite important the shape of the leaf because um, the leaves are a really important part of any plant, it keeps it alive after all and um, they can be very beautiful. I actually quite, I, I actually really prefer um, painting the leaves to the flowers quite often um, because I, I think I like green um, and I like the way that you can mix so many different colors of green with um, just using two colors like a one blue and a pinacridone gold. You can get a whole range of different colors which is really cool. So this is going to be my um, basic flower sketch. This is just the sketch. This is only the the trial. I'm not going to paint on this paper. It's not good enough. And then here I have um, this is a print of <coughs> my um, dragonfly painting, which I think most of you have probably seen. And I'm going to use that dragonfly as a visitor. I'm going to use that as inspiration for the dragonfly I'm going to put on here. This is a print actually. And um, if anyone is interested in purchasing prints of any of the um, tutorials, uh, you just need to contact me. Just uh, drop me an email or put a comment, better still, uh, put a comment in, in yeah, below any of the videos. If you're interested in a print, we, we can do it by downloads. You can have a digital download sent to you uh, for a very low price, or I can send you um, this is a quality print that we do ourselves on a very expensive printer that we bought when my husband wasn't looking. Um, and uh, yeah, so we do very good full quality professional prints and you can have one of those for a very reasonable price too. If you go to our website, you'll see a lot of them there, but a lot of them aren't there because it's not fully up to date yet. So, um, but they are available. In other words, you can just Drop me a comment in the box below the video that you're interested in buying a print for and um, then we will um, be in touch and we'll sort something out. I hope that makes sense. Talking and trying to think about what I'm painting and drawing at the same time is never terribly successful for me. Um, anyway, so there we are. That doesn't look too bad, does it? We'll put another leaf over this side. There we are, something like that. Maybe another one up here. And um, so that's the dragonfly here. He's pretty sketchy, but still he's, he's there. He's going to be quite large because these flowers are actually quite small. Usually hydrangeas are massive, but um, these ones. 
And what I'm going to do on the paper, I'm going to drop in different colours, let them blend, and then I'm going to sharpen them up with some pen and ink. Then I'm going to draw this in pen and ink and then colour it in. So that's what we're going to do. So don't forget what I said about the prints. Um, and uh, let's get started with that. So I'm going to turn you off for a second, back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. And Lottie, what are you doing in the sheep paddock? Oh dear, honestly, she's such a pickle. Okay, so I have my sketch here now drawn out on my piece of stretched watercolour paper. And um, the colours I'm going to be using today are Windsor Violet or Quinacridone Purple, same thing. Um, permanent Rose or Opera Pink, any one of those um, bluish pinks. Um, and Cobalt Blue, and Cobalt rather than Thalo because Thalo Blue is too greenish and doesn't make good lilacs and so on. Um, and Cobalt I find is more um, of a good mixer and of course quinacridone gold. Um, I've got some dry liners here, which I'm going to be using pigment liners. I always call them dry liners. It's because I used to be a teacher and we always used to use those things that we used to use on the whiteboards, call them that. Anyway, they're not that, they're pigment liners. They are waterproof and they're very good, these Stettler ones, very good price. Um, check the, de the description below for some links to the different things that I use in the paintings. Um, you might find something there that uh, that you need. And if you click on one of our links and either go to Jackson's in the UK, they ship worldwide though, and their prices are very good and they're very reliable. Um, or you can uh, use the Amazon links as well. And we really appreciate that when you do because we get a, a tiny but not insignificant um, commission on that, which is, that's why we're all here on YouTube, isn't it? We're all trying to help one another. Okay, so I've just wetted the area of the two flowers and I'm going to make the one in the back a little bit um, bluer and the one in the front a little bit pinker. Um, lots of different ways you can do this, um, but I said I'm gonna make the one in the background bluer, so I'm just gonna drop in some dots to represent the florets of different intensities, sort of a little bit random and then um, I'm going to also add a little bit of the um, violet to the blue and um, drop some of that in as well. And I'm just going to let that mix and mingle and uh, make sure you leave some um, spaces between some light spaces and then it'll look more airy and open and natural like that. And uh, so then I'll wash my brush out and I'll come back in on the other flower um, with some pink and I'm going to do exactly the same just drop in some dots and dashes and uh, keep it a little bit lighter near the top a little bit uh, a little bit more intense as it goes to the underneath the shadow if you've stretched your paper and if you're using a decent watercolor paper it doesn't have to be 100% cotton um, but if you're using a decent paper um, you'll find that um, the colours will blend nicely without too much cockling. I've got a little bit of buckling on this sheet. I don't think I stretched it very well. And yes, it's not quite stuck down all the way around, so I didn't do a very good job there, obviously. So there you go. Okay, so that's the first layer, and we'll let that um, dry before we do the next step. But meanwhile, we can start on the leaves. And um, we're going to drop in some um, quinacridone gold first of all, and then we'll just add some um, cobalt blue to give us a nice greenish tone there. And we can drag the same color down to here. This again, as I said, is the, the first first layer you can use green if you want you could you could just um, cut to the chase and use um, sap green but I heartily recommend that you don't use it neat you don't use it straight out of the tube or the pan the sap green you want to use it mixed with something else any yellow or any blue or any red or anything just to cut it down because sap green can be pretty strong-minded. So 
I'm doing the same on this one. Whichever system you decide on, whether you're going to do it with um, sap green or with the quinacridone and cobalt mix, um, it's best not to change halfway through because you'll find that the colours will start to clash. Um, so now we want some slightly darker green for the stem. I'll just take the stems up the back there too. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Take that out. If you want to indicate some of the veins on the leaves without having to paint them in, you can just drag, I'm using a feather here, just drag a feather, the, the hard bit, the tip, over the leaf and you'll find you'll get a a darker line there where you've done that as the paint goes into the groove that you've just made. Don't go crazy with that but you can do a few and then once that's settled then you can go in with a little bit more colour if you want to to strengthen that up a bit. Um, I think maybe we might want a little bit more leaf poking out the back there. But we don't want to go too crazy, we'll let that dry. Um, and then we have the um, the dragonfly, so we'll just drop in a very small amount of paint and just lightly like that. And we'll do it pretty much the same as the last one. So he had um, the front wing was kind of mauve and then the back wing was on the yellow side. So we'll just, I have no idea if dragonflies are really anything like that, but um, you never know, do you? So you can play God when you, when you paint, you can create things. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll give him a little, little bit of bleed there and see what that does. And we'll emphasize his shape and everything with um, the pen once it's all dry. I think it's going to rain. The temperature has dropped. Yes, it's gone down to normal. We've got just normal 25 degrees or something out there today, which is a blessed relief. It really is. Okay, so I'm going to finish my coffee, let that dry and come back shortly to do the next step. Okay, so that's now dry and I think you'd probably agree with me that that looks quite pretty. It's quite delicate and um, so first thing I'm going to do at this point is to just erase some of the pencil lines, the ones that are a little bit uh, unnecessary now that we've got the first layer of paint in. And um, but I'm not going to get rid of the ones that I used to construct the, butter, the um, dragonfly. I'm going to just um, take out the ones that were down here. And uh, at this point you could look at this and you it depends what you want to achieve and I'm hesitating about the ink at the moment because <clears throat> I do feel that this looks quite pretty but I am definitely going to do some ink work on on the dragonfly because it's a kind of inky kind of creature isn't it so we're just going to just give it a little bit of structure because he's all segmented just very lightly like that. And then I might need to turn the board around. So that I can do the, the wings. Just broken lines, very light. Don't outline it heavily because that doesn't ever look good. So just, and then a few to indicate veins. Doesn't have to be accurate keep them loose and as uh, as somebody says, someone I watch occasionally who I think is a, a very good illustrator, um, Shader Campbell is it? 
she talks about messy lines and she means broken and expressive drawing. So I think that'll do for that. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll just find a slightly smaller brush than the one I was using. And I'm just going to <coughs> add, it's going to pour with rain in a minute. Honestly, it's not one thing, it's another. The cat's meowing. So just a few strokes and then perhaps a little bit of shadow along the body. And if you drop in color that's um, darker than you actually want, just come back with a clean brush and just soften that up. That's the best way to do it anyway. <clears throat> um, so this one's very undefined. This one's got a little bit definition because I've left also some gaps there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in some more just light ink, broken up like that. And on the blue one, we put some, just a few lilac-y. I don't know if you've noticed that blue is much more um, much more inclined to give you form when you use blue because it's a shadow colour rather than pink which tends not to have much of a shadowy impression about it. The blue will give you form and you have to be very careful not to go too heavily into shadows and things with, with, um, with the blues. So we need to darken up our green a bit in some places, so we'll put a little bit of something darker here near to the flower perhaps. I always try to be not to be too precise. Maybe uh, think about something else while you're doing it. It's probably the best thing to do. Think about what you're going to watch on telly tonight. I can't watch new shows anymore. I can't, I really can't. The last thing I watched was, um, what was it called? Um, Animal, Animal Kingdom. It's about some criminals in uh, California. My God. <laughs> so that was it. I said, no, that's it, finish. So now we watch old stuff. I've been watching, because um, sometimes, you know, you can't paint all day long, can you, or do housework. Uh, we've been watching um, The Darling Buds of May. I'm sure a lot of English people will remember that. I never watched it when it first came out. I was too busy uh, with so many other things at that time. And I didn't realize it was set in Kent where I was living at the time. If I'd have realized that, I would have probably watched it because David Jason's really fun and a great actor. Is he still alive? Put the answer in the comments below, please. Somebody from England. Now we'll just drop in a few more into these soft areas. We'll drop in a few more. I'm going to not uh, ink the flowers, I've decided. I have made an executive decision. Um, because I think that would spoil it. That's the thing though, when you are doing a painting, you have to allow yourself to um, change your mind, don't you? you? You can set out with an idea and uh, then as you go along, you're going to sometimes find, no, that's actually either worked better than you thought or it hasn't worked as well. So you have to change what you were going to do. 
and I am going to stop now and um, almost now, not quite. I think a little bit of spatter would be a good idea. We will put some bluish up here. You don't want that one for a delicate painting like this. And then we'll put some greenish down here. And I, I don't know what, um, what you like, but quite often if I'm doing a painting for myself or to sell, I'll put some spatter in and then I'll break it up a bit like that. And quite often I, I work that quite, quite a bit. But if you don't want to, you don't have to, you can just leave it at the earlier stage. So there we are. So that's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. But most importantly of all, please leave your comments in the box below. Um, and um, let me know if there's anything that you would like me to paint and um, give me your feedback. I know you do and it's always lovely and I do enjoy that very much. So, um, so yes, let's keep in touch. So I'll let you go now and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye bye.